Hello, and welcome to the Honeywell Pilot Familiarization video for Premise Elite Advanced Features. I'm Rob Ehrlich with Honeywell's Flight Technical Services, and I will be discussing the features of Honeywell's latest display unit, Advanced Features. In this webinar, we will be discussing the Primus Elite system, the primary flight display or PFD enhancements, the cursor control device functions, the multi-function display enhancements, the video display feature that is available, and the maintenance page enhancements. In this section, I will be discussing the system hardware for the advanced features upgrade. Honeywell's DU875 liquid crystal displays are the foundation of a whole new view from your flight deck. Each DU875 high resolution display is a form fit upgrade that provides more clarity in all cockpit lighting conditions, is significantly more reliable than the existing cathode ray tube displays, and each unit saves about 7 pounds of weight. The Premise Elite Advanced Features major components for the DU875 upgrade includes up to a total of six display units which include pilot and co-pilot flight displays or PFDs, pilot and co-pilot multifunction displays or MFDs, one engine indicating and crew alerting system or ICAST display, and one system display unit. Additionally, the upgrade comes with pilot and co-pilot MC800 cursor control devices, a DL1000 data loader, and finally, for the XM weather feature, an XMD-157 XM receiver and XM rant XM antenna are included. This section will describe enhancements on the primary flight display, or PFD, with Primus Elite advanced features. The Synthetic Vision System, or SVS, enhances flight crew awareness by providing a synthetic three-dimensional view of the surrounding environment, including sky, land, water, grid lines, obstacles, airports, and runways, in addition to standard flight and navigation data, which includes position, altitude, heading, and track. The SVS uses obstacle and terrain databases to integrate existing flight deck data, field of view, and advanced symbology elements to assist in the pilot's ability to identify potential terrain and obstacle conflicts, as well as to identify visual references. Synthetic vision helps to reduce workload during certain tasks due to increased information presented to the pilot on the PFD in a very intuitive way. It reduces the need to scan between the PFD and the MFD for the purpose of ascertaining situation information relating to terrain, aircraft position, and other important information. Pictured here is the PFD Blue Over Brown. If SVS is selected on Power Up, the legacy Blue Over Brown screen will be displayed while SVS initializes. An enunciator is displayed on the lower right side of the HSI displaying SVS init. Other enunciators, along with the SVS init that may be displayed, are SVS input invalid, SVS no coverage, or SVS fail. Shown here is the SVS image on the PFD. Some of the major SVS features will be explained next. The flight path vector, obstacle depiction, airport flags, runway highlighting, and grid lines. The flight path vector, or FPV, is similar to what is found in head-up displays. The green FPS depicts lateral and vertical path and is conformal to the SVS scene. The FPV provides a visual depiction of the actual path of the aircraft through space. It is displayed when SVS is enabled except during excessive attitudes. When SVS is turned off, the FPV is not shown. When the FPV position exceeds the display limits on the Synthetic Vision PFD, the FPV becomes stippled and is placed at the edge of the ADI area as shown in the image on the right, indicating that the FPV is not currently showing the actual path of the aircraft. Obstacles are displayed as solid rectangles 
The obstacle database includes reported obstacles greater than 100 feet and has worldwide coverage. Obstacles are conformal in height, but not necessarily in width. Obstacles not reported by government authorities are not in the database and therefore cannot be depicted. The airport identifier designates the aircraft's destination airport using its ICAO code. Towered airports are displayed in Cyan and non-towered airports are displayed in Magenta. At 4.5 nautical miles, the airport identifiers will fade out and disappear from view, and the runway highlight takes prominence starting at 5 nautical miles. The airport identifiers can be turned on or off in the Maintenance Options page. Runways begin to fade into view at 40 nautical miles, as shown in the image on the left, and appear larger as the distance to the runway decreases. The FMS selected destination runway is displayed with a cyan outline. Hard surface runways are displayed with runway designation, pavement textures, threshold markings, side stripe markings, aiming point markings, and a runway center line, as shown in the image on the right. Runway designations that include letters are displayed with the letter below the number. Runway pavement texture is displayed in dark gray. Light gray threshold markings are displayed with a varying number of stripes depending on the runway width. More exact details on the width can be found in the Primus Elite Advanced Features Pilot Guide. Displaced threshold and stopway runway detailing are also displayed for applicable hard surface runways. These images show examples of hard surface runway markings displayed with SVS. The SVS depicts soft surface runways in dark green, with runway designation and side stripe markings in light green. Synthetic vision images on the PFD display the terrain with grid lines to provide a sense of motion and height above the ground, as well as depth perception and terrain closure rate. Grid lines are regularly spaced semi-transparent black lines overlaying the synthetic terrain. The grid lines run approximately north-south and east-west and are spaced at one nautical mile by one nautical mile. They follow the contour of the terrain and are always present. This image shows an example of grid lines displayed on the SVS. In the event of an unusual attitude, SVS adapts to maintain situational awareness and maintain recovery. In such an incident, the PFD reverts to the blue over brown display to declutter the pilot view of the PFD and send a clear message in terms of flight maneuver direction guidance. In the event of an aircraft unusual attitude, the PFD declutters by removing SVS and displaying fly down or fly up chevrons at 10 degree increments. In cases where there is a limited amount of SVS terrain visible on the display, a ground veil fills the area between the zero pitch reference line and the top of the terrain horizon. The ground veil ensures the pilot a clear depiction of the direction of the ground as depicted in the PFD image on the right. The appearance of a ground veil is determined by three factors, aircraft pitch, the amount of SVS terrain is decreased in the field of view as aircraft pitch is increased. Aircraft roll, the amount of SVS terrain in the field of view is decreased as the roll attitude becomes excessive. And aircraft altitude, due to the curvature of the earth, distance between the SV terrain horizon and the zero pitch reference line increases as altitude increases. To address situations where there is a limited amount of sky visible on the display, a sky veil fills the area between the zero pitch reference line and the top of the horizon. The PFD image on the left shows the SVS without the sky veil, and the PFD image on the right shows the SVS with the sky veil. The PFD also provides for a TCAS resolution advisory pitch command. TCAS resolution advisories are displayed on the PFD as shown. The TCAS pitch command is displayed on the ADI. The pilot maneuvers the aircraft to match the aircraft pitch on the ADI to the green fly to pitch box. When the aircraft is flown into the green box, the aircraft symbol changes to green. The red goal posts indicate where not to fly. When the aircraft is in the red do not fly area, the aircraft symbol turns to red as shown in the PFD image on the right. Additionally, the Flight Director command bar is removed during a resolution advisory. 
Another visual cue on the SVS PFD is the Pitch Limit Indicator, or PLI, which is displayed when the Flight Director Vertical Capture Mode is set to Wind Shear and is not removed until Wind Shear Mode is cancelled and a different Flight Director Mode is selected or Autopilot is engaged. The Pitch Limit Indicator facilitates the pilot's management of the aircraft during a wind shear condition by providing the remaining pitch attitude margin to the stick shaker. The pitch limit indicator will be parked at the top of the scale when there is a large margin to the stick shaker, but will not go out of view. The images displayed here and the next slide are for reference only and come from the pilot guide for Primus Elite Advanced Features. You can pause this here and the next slide anytime to view all the features on the SVS PFD. In the following slides, we will see more about the SVS PFD layout and the associated alerts. Here is the basic SVS PFD layout similar to the blue over brown display showing the mode enunciator section, the ADI display, the altitude display, the vertical speed display, the HSI display, the airspeed display, and the navigation source display. Taking a closer look at the mode enunciators from the left, they are Auto Throttle Engage Enunciators, Auto Throttle Performance Mode, the Flight Director Lateral Modes, AP Engage Enunciators, Flight Director Vertical Modes, AP Engage Enunciators, Air Data Source Mode, and the Yaw Damper Mode. Armed modes are displayed in white, and active modes are displayed in green. The auto throttle mode LIM or LIM enunciation is displayed in amber and flashes when there is a power limited speed control deviation. As a side note, the yaw damper enunciator is a feature for the Embraer L600-650. It is displayed in the upper middle of the PFD directly below the autopilot enunciator. When the yaw damper or YD is normally engaged, YD is displayed. When the yaw damper is normally or abnormally disengaged, YD is displayed and flashes for five seconds. SVS fail is displayed when the terrain database has failed or if an internal failure of SVS has occurred. With this enunciator, blue over brown PFD format is displayed. SVS input invalid the SVS cannot be displayed due to invalid input from the GPS or IRS, or the GPS position integrity exceeds the warning threshold for the current phase of flight or AGL altitude. Blue over brown PFD format is displayed. SVS will return if input validity and integrity return. SVS no coverage is displayed in polar regions the system has no coverage for the current area and the system displays blue over brown instead. SVS init is displayed when the SVS system is initializing. Blue over brown PFD format is displayed. It will take approximately 90 seconds for the SVS to appear. SVS obstacle and airport fail means the SVS navigational database is invalid. Airports, runways, and obstacles are not displayed. Terrain continues to be displayed. SVS Check Database is displayed when the SVS Navigation Database is out of date. The enunciator is displayed on ground only when airspeed is less than 60 knots. SVS Position Integrity is displayed when the GPS position uncertainty has exceeded the normal threshold for the current phase of flight or AGL altitude, but has not yet exceeded the threshold to automatically remove the SVS. SVS Obstacle in Op is displayed when the SVS cannot display obstacles due to an obstacle density issue. Terrain, airports, and runways are displayed. SVS Airport in Op 
is displayed when the SVS cannot display airports due to an airport and or runway density issue. Terrain and obstacles will continue to be displayed. It is important to remember SVS is intended for situational awareness and an overall safer flying experience and is not intended for navigation or obstacle avoidance. SVS is not to be used as a head-up display nor be used as primary guidance during takeoff and landing. Because of GPS signal issues at certain Earth regions, SVS cannot yet be used in polar regions. This concludes the Primus Elite Advanced Features section covering synthetic vision systems on the primary flight display. This section will describe the cursor control device. The cursor control devices, known as CCDs or controllers, control the enhanced information displayed on the MFD. The MC-800 controller, shown on top, applies to the Global Express, the Falcon 900 EXC, and the Legacy 600-650. The Citation 10 and the Lear 4045 controllers are shown on the left and are both designed to fit on the Zeus rails in the center pedestal. The Map button provides a shortcut to selecting the geopolitical map with uplink weather overlay. The Chart button provides a shortcut to selecting the Charts function. The joystick controls different aspects of the display unit. Drop-down menus for MFD, chart, map, video, and maintenance functions. When in the legacy mode, pushing the menu button on the MC-800 displays the on-screen MFD menu buttons. The MFD button toggles the enhanced mode to the legacy mode display. The push to enter button selects the button or function highlighted by the cursor on the MFD. The MFD cursor is displayed in yellow and can be moved with the joystick to highlight a selection. The cursor with halo symbol is displayed when the cursor controller is initially moved after the cursor is inactive. A gray halo is momentarily displayed around the cursor to aid the pilot in quickly locating the cursor on the MFD. This section of Honeywell's Primus Elite Advanced Features webinar will discuss the multifunction display or MFD system for the DU-875 display. Primus Elite Advanced Features on the Multifunction Display, or MFD, offers the following among its main benefits. Checklist is selected for display on the MFD. Geo-referenced electronic charts and approach plates. Moving maps. TCAS overlay on the MFD. XM weather. A newer Advanced Features update will include SXM. METAR and TAF data, video display capability, and maintenance page enhancements. Next, we will see a short video which describes the Primus Elite display system features and enhancements. The Primus Elite Flight Deck features some of the most advanced cockpit technology in the field today. At the forefront of the cockpit is the Primus Elite DU-875 display unit. The DU-875 is an LCD display that features an advanced graphical map, electronic terminal charts, XM graphical weather, video display capability, and more. The display is controlled by a cursor control device, or CCD. In addition to the cursor controller, the CCD has a menu button and three shortcut buttons. The Primus Elite display unit features a legacy mode and an enhanced mode. The legacy mode contains all of the display features that were present before the display retrofit. The Enhanced Mode contains the additional enhanced features such as electronic terminal charts, enhanced map display, video, and other options. To toggle between Enhanced and Legacy Mode, push the Menu button on the CCD. 
If any of the enhanced pages are already displayed, pushing the menu button reverts the display to the legacy mode. To access the enhanced mode features, push the menu button to access the on-screen menu buttons. Click on Chart to access the electronic terminal charts display. The Electronic Charts function provides access to an electronic copy of any Jeppesen terminal chart within a subscription area. Access to additional coverage areas can be obtained by contacting INDS and requesting the appropriate access code. Available charts include airport diagrams, departures, arrivals, approaches, noise charts, notums, and airspace charts. Many charts are geo-referenced, meaning the current aircraft position can be displayed on the chart. To find out whether a particular chart is geo-referenced, look for the geo-reference icon. The charts function also saves time by providing quick access to the airports in the FMS active and alternate flight plans. Click on Map to access the enhanced map display. The Enhanced Map Display features a live moving map that displays the active flight plan and overlays various items such as airports, VORs, airspace information, and graphical weather. Graphical weather information can be displayed by selecting the Weather drop-down menu. Graphical Weather is a subscription service provided by the XM Datalink system and provides the pilot with quick access to various weather products such as Nexrad, Satellite Views, AirMets, SigMets, and more. The selected weather data is overlaid on the map display and greatly aids the pilot in flight planning as well as maintaining situational awareness. Click on the video button to access a live video feed from video cameras connected to the system. The data button on the menu displays the database configuration page. The Database Configuration page provides you with access to the effective dates of the various databases installed on the selected display unit. The Database Configuration page is also used to load new databases using the DL1000 Data Loader. When using the Primus Elite system, there are a few items a pilot must remember. The display automatically changes from the Enhanced mode to the Legacy mode in some situations. For example, if a display reversion occurs, if the checklist is selected on the display controller, if EGPWS terrain display is selected, or an EGPWS automatic pop-up occurs, or TCAS is selected for display. Currently, TCAS targets are not displayed on the MFD in enhanced mode in the event of a traffic alert or resolution advisory. This will be addressed in future enhancements. However, RA guidance will continue to be displayed on the PFD regardless of the MFD mode. For more information on legacy mode reversion, refer to the Honeywell Pilot's Guide. The Primus Elite Display System provides the pilot with numerous tools that reduce cockpit workload while enhancing situational awareness. This video has been a basic overview of the Primus Elite Display System. For a detailed description, refer to the Honeywell Pilot's Guide or Manufacturer's Guidance. The charts display offers a myriad of benefits to pilots, which will enable access to publications needed for all modes of navigation. The following is a list of the charts available for display. Airport charts, SID charts, star charts, approach charts, noise abatement charts, notums or notices to airmen, and airspace charts. The next short video describes the Primus Elite charts display features and enhancements.
The Primus Elite display system has the ability to display electronic terminal charts. This feature gives you the ability to display Jeppesen charts directly on the MFD. To access the charts display, push the Charts button on the CCD or push the Menu button and select Chart. When accessing the charts function for the first time after power-up, the revision info window is displayed. The revision info window provides a general idea of the geographical regions covered by the current charts database. If the charts database is out of date, a warning message will be displayed on the revision info page. Below the coverage map are the serial number and access code fields. A serial number is issued to each chart subscriber and determines the coverage area for the particular subscription. When additional or temporary access for a particular geographical region is needed, an access code can be requested. Entering the access code provides temporary access to the requested region. Serial numbers and access codes are entered by using the virtual keyboard and only have to be entered once per update cycle. After entering the codes, close the revision window to return to the main charts window. The chart tab is used to access the various types of charts that can be displayed. To select a chart, simply highlight the desired button and press enter on the CCD. If the button has a drop down menu, highlight and select the button to display the options on that menu. Scroll bars at the edge of the screen are used to scroll the chart display. To access the scroll bars, simply move the cursor to the edge of the chart. In order to scroll the map in the direction indicated by the pointer on the bar, push and hold the CCD Enter button when the cursor is on the scroll bar. In addition to scrolling on the chart, zooming in or out of the chart is accomplished by using the scroll knob on the CCD. The airport drop-down menu contains the origin, destination, and alternate airports from the FMS flight plan. Click on the airport identifier to access the charts for the airport. To access charts for an airport not contained in the FMS flight plan, click on Search Airport. Use the CCD and the on-screen keyboard to search for the desired airport. Airports can be searched for by the ICAO identifier, airport name, or by the city or country the airport is located in. Any airports that fit the entered search criteria are displayed in the search results window. Highlight and select the airport to view the associated charts, or close the search window to return to the previous page. To access a particular chart, first select the airport. The identifier for the selected airport is displayed in the upper left corner followed by the chart tab bar. The chart tab bar provides access to the different categories of charts for the selected airport. If a chart category is not available for the selected airport, the associated tab is grayed out. Select the desired chart category. The chart title bar displays the name of the currently selected chart. Any procedures in the active flight plan are displayed first, followed by the rest of the available charts. The name of the chart is displayed along the left of the screen, followed by the chart index number on the right side of the screen. When there are more results that can be shown in a window, a scroll bar will be displayed. Use the CCD to select a chart for display on the MFD. Pushing the CCD Enter button when the cursor is on a chart displays the Chart Task menu. The Chart Task menu is used to control how the selected chart is displayed on the MFD. The chart display can be panned, centered, or fit to screen. The Pan button is an alternative to using the scroll bar. Once Pan is selected, Push and hold the CCD Enter button while moving the CCD to pan across the chart. To center the chart on a place of interest, place the cursor on the desired location on the chart, push the Enter button on the CCD, and select Center Chart. 
To center the chart on the aircraft position, select Center Aircraft. The split function can be used to display the plan view of the chart along with the header section, profile view, or minimum section of the chart at the same time. To split the view of a chart, click on Split and choose between the header, profile, or minimum of views. The chart display can be rotated using the rotate button. When available, selecting aircraft displays the actual location of the aircraft in relation to the chart using a green aircraft symbol. To view the aircraft location on a chart, the selected chart must be geo-referenced. Geo-referenced charts are indicated by a white aircraft symbol displayed in the chart title bar. In addition, when the chart is included in the active flight plan, the aircraft symbol is green. The geo-reference feature greatly increases situational awareness both in the air and on the ground and can be used with other cockpit indications to quickly determine the aircraft's position. The charts feature on the Primus Elite display system is a great way to quickly access terminal charts and can help reduce cockpit clutter while providing increased situational awareness both on the ground and in flight. This video has been a basic overview of the charts function on the Primus Elite display system. For a detailed description, please refer to the Honeywell Pilot's Guide or Manufacturer's Guidance. In review, for more information on revision information, please consult the Primus Elite Advanced Features Pilot Guide Revision Information regarding the charts, subscriptions, and coverage areas. Another note from the Charts video is the Chart tab bar. In review, the top horizontal menu displays the options for selection. The tab buttons on the tab bar are available for selection only when an ICAO airport identifier is displayed in the airport selection window. When the tab is available for selection, the text button is white. When the tab is not available for selection, the text on the button is gray. When the origin, destination, or alternate airport is initially selected or read from the FMS, the airport tab is the current tab selected. The tab buttons displayed for selection on the chart tab bar are the following from left to right. Airport, SID, STAR, Approach, Noise, NOTAM, Airspace, and Chart. A final note from the video is the Chart Task menu, which is displayed when the cursor is placed on a displayed chart and the Enter button on the Cursor Control Device, or CCD, is pushed. The Task menu is displayed in its entirety in the Chart portion of the window. The graphical moving map comes with the following features. Airspace and airways, geopolitical boundaries, graphical representation of the active flight plan, uplink graphical weather, traffic display, magnetic or true heading, navigational aids or nav aids, and miscellaneous enunciators. Next we will see a short video that describes all the map display features. The Primus Elite Display System has the ability to display a graphical moving map. The map is capable of displaying nav aids, airways and airspace boundaries, geopolitical boundaries, flight plan information, uplink graphical weather, and much more. The pilot can choose the items to be displayed on the map using the CCD and various drop-down menus. The map display features a control bar that contains menu selections and drop-down menus that can be used to select the display characteristics of the map. To access the map display, 
push the Map Shortcut button on the CCD or push the Menu button and select Map from the on-screen menu. The Map Data drop-down menu in the control bar is used to select the items to be displayed on the map display. A checkbox appears next to an item when it is selected for display. Selecting airports displays the geographical locations of airports on the map. To reduce clutter on the display, airports are categorized as major airports and minor airports. An airport is classified as a major airport if at least one of the runways is 4,000 feet or greater in length. Depending on the selected map range, major airports are displayed with runways and ILS feathers when appropriate. ILS feathers are displayed for runways in the navigation database that have ILS approaches associated with them. Airports that do not have any runways at least 4,000 feet in length are classified as minor airports. Minor airports are displayed with the airport identifier and symbol, but do not display runways. Selecting VOR from the Map Data drop-down menu displays all VHF nav aids, including Vortex, DME stations, and TACHAMs. VORs are displayed using a nav aid symbol and station identifier. Similar to VORs, selecting NDB displays NDBs along with their identifiers on the map display. Intersections can be displayed on the map display by selecting Intersections. Intersections on the map are displayed using the intersection symbol and name depending on the map range. Airways can also be selected for display on the map. Airways are differentiated by high and low airways. The airway identifier can be displayed by highlighting the airway. If an airway segment consists of multiple airways, all the identifiers are displayed in one label box. Airspace boundaries can be selected for display by selecting Terminal Airspace or Special Use Airspace. At any time, selecting Aircraft Center on the control bar centers the map display on the present position of the aircraft. Selecting the Primary Weather button displays the Uplink Graphical Weather drop-down menu. This menu is used to control the display of graphical weather on the map display. Graphical weather is an option. Selecting the Map Mode button toggles the map display orientation between North Up and Heading Up. Pushing the Map Mode button automatically centers the aircraft on the map. The default setting is Heading Up. The map mode changes to fixed when the mode is heading up and the aircraft is no longer centered on the map. The previous and next buttons on the control bar allow the pilot to step through the flight plan waypoints on the map display. The hot map button is displayed on the right edge of the control bar and is labeled with a globe. Pushing the hot map button brings up a map of the world for easy repositioning of the map display. This feature makes it easy to quickly reposition the map when needed. The hot map display is automatically deactivated if the cursor is moved away from the hot map for more than two seconds. The route and waypoints of the active flight plan are displayed graphically on the map. The current two waypoint is always displayed in magenta while the other waypoints are displayed in white. The FMS data display contains information regarding the active FMS source, distance to the active waypoint, and waypoint name. The map also displays holding patterns. On some aircraft, procedure turns are also displayed. The map display on the Primus Elite display system improves a pilot's situational awareness and reduces pilot workload by providing quick access to relevant flight information. This video has been a basic overview of the map display on the Primus Elite display system. For a detailed description, refer to the Honeywell Pilot's Guide or Manufacturer's Guidance.
There are a few topics briefly discussed in the video which are worthy of review. As seen in the video, the Map Data button is located on the Enhanced Map Control bar. To access the map features, look for the Map Data button on the left side of the horizontal menu bar on top of the MFD. The list displays selectable overlays on the MFD. Details of each selection overlay display, as well as limitations, can be found in the Primus Elite Advanced Features Pilot Guide. Another point of review from the video are the enhanced map symbols. The FMS source enunciator indicates the source of the FMS information. The available FMS sources are FMS1, FMS2, or FMS3. The FMS source is displayed in Magenta when the pilot and co-pilot MFDs have different FMS sources selected. The FMS source is displayed in Amber if the pilot and co-pilot MFDs have the same MFD source selected as shown in the image on the left. As the cursor is moved around the map display, the nearest selectable object to the cursor position is highlighted, as seen in the center image called Cursor Focus Highlight. Selectable objects include airports, VORs, non-directional beacons or NDBs, intersections and waypoints, aircraft symbols, and airways. Also displayed are runways, the image on the right. When the navigation database has runway information for an airport, a runway symbol with an instrument landing system or ILS feathers are displayed instead of the airport symbol. The runway symbol and ILS feathers are displayed with the correct orientation corresponding to the aircraft bearing and rotates as the aircraft turns and the map rotates. The airport identifier text maintains straight up orientation and does not rotate as the aircraft turns and the map rotates. When the map mode is selected to the heading up mode, a digital heading readout is displayed. The heading source, magnetic or true, is selected from the FMS on each side. To review, selections from the map control bar are as follows from the left. Map data, aircraft center, uplink weather, map mode, previous waypoint, next waypoint, hot map, and map drop-down menu. Additionally, the hot map button is on the enhanced map control bar. The hot map button is used to bring up a map of the world for map display repositioning. An example of the hot map display is shown in the image on the right. Pressing the hot map button displays the cursor as a magnifying window on the world map. The magnified area of the hot map opens to latitude longitude 00, zero position on the map display. The area around the current cursor position gives a two times magnification of the hot map. The map display video does not cover the TCAS option available in the map data drop down menu. We'll cover that here. If TCAS is installed, it can be selected from the Map Data Horizontal Menu button on the left, as depicted in the image on the right. Then select TCAS from the bottom of the drop-down menu. It can be selected either in Heading Up or North Up mode. TCAS targets are now displayed on the MFD Enhanced Map to provide traffic awareness without having to revert to the legacy map. When the Enhanced Map is selected and a TCAS Resolution Advisory or RA or Traffic Alert or TA occurs, TCAS targets are overlaid on the enhanced map. Traffic is depicted using similar symbology as the legacy map. Select TCAS for display on the enhanced map from the enhanced map data menu. TCAS is the default display after a cold start of the display. Additionally, TCAS can be selected only for the legacy map from the MFD controller. Controller buttons were described in detail prior to the section on PFD SVS. As mentioned previously, traffic symbols remain as they have been in legacy formats on the PFD. This image comes from the pilot guide for Honeywell Primus Elite Advanced Features. It is here merely for easy reference. Altitude symbols are shown as a data tag with the traffic symbols. The data tag contains information on the relative altitude or the absolute altitude of the other aircraft. Color-coded alerts are defined as follows. Red TCAS when a resolution advisory or RA exists. 
Amber TCAS when an RA does not exist and a traffic advisory or TA does exist. White TCAS when there is no RA or TA. And gray TCAS when the display range is greater than 150 nautical miles or the enhanced map is displayed in fixed mode or north up stationary mode. Please see the Honeywell Pilot Guide for Primus Elite Advanced Features or for Primus Elite Display System to see notes associated with TCAS displays for more details. Weather can be accessed from the WXPRI drop-down menu. The drop-down menu is used for selecting different types of graphical weather products for display on the enhanced map, turning the legends on or off, and opening the secondary views menu. Selections include secondary views, next rad or next generation weather radar, storm tops, satellite, winds, TFRs, air mat, sigmat, air turbulence, lightning, replay, and legend. The following video describes the graphical weather features in more detail. The Primus Elite Display System has the ability to display graphical weather on a moving map. The weather information is received from XM Weather Satellite data transmissions. The various XM Weather products are valuable tools that can help pilots acquire a comprehensive understanding of the weather in and around their route of flight. To access the graphical weather, Click on the primary weather button to display a drop-down menu containing the various graphical weather products. A check mark indicates that the associated weather product is selected for display. Multiple weather products can be selected and displayed simultaneously. NextRad images display uplinked radar images. NextRad, or Next Generation Radar, is a network of Doppler radars operated by the National Weather Service. Pilots must remember that the NEXRAD image displayed in the cockpit is not real-time weather. The images can be in excess of 20 minutes old. This potential delay should be taken into consideration when using NEXRAD images for weather avoidance. Information about the tops of thunderstorms above flight level 280 can be displayed by selecting Storm Tops. Storm cell height is displayed in flight levels and is only available when NEXRAD is also selected. In addition to cell height, the speed and direction that the cell is moving is also displayed. Selecting lightning will display lightning strike activity on the map. This information can be paired with the NEXRAD images to get a comprehensive view of where the most severe weather may be. Lightning information is not displayed when the map range is above 200 miles. Select Satellite from the drop-down menu to display a satellite mosaic of cloud cover over the continental United States. Cloud temperatures are estimated at various altitudes across the country and converted into estimated cloud heights. Selecting Winds displays the winds aloft for the selected altitude. Place the cursor over the altitude window and rotate the scroll knob to change the altitude. The winds legend is color-coded for the different wind speeds. An arrow is also displayed on top of the color-coded wind speeds to show wind direction. Areas affected by airmets and sigmets can be graphically displayed on the map, either independently or together. The map legend is color-coded to show what type of airmet or sigmet has been issued. Click on the border to display additional information about the airmet or sigmet. Selecting air turbulence will show areas of forecasted turbulence for the selected altitude. The legend is color-coded to show the intensity of the turbulence. 
Additional weather products are contained under the Secondary Views tab. Echo Tops displays the maximum altitude of precipitation returns on the map. The Echo Tops legend is color coded in thousands of feet. The XM coverage areas show the areas that receive XM weather data transmissions. Selecting Replay displays a continuous loop of the weather data that is currently displayed. The Replay function can help pilots predict the development and future movement of the weather. Once this option is selected, the weather menu closes and the replay will begin. A box shows the time frame of the replay image and indicates when the replay is complete. To stop the replay, Simply move the cursor or push the enter button on the CCD. Most of the weather products feature a timeout monitor. This monitor shows you the amount of time the selected product has been displayed and counts up to a maximum valid time for the weather report. XM Weather Data Services provide pilots with valuable tools that, when used correctly, can aid in avoiding bad weather while resulting in safe and efficient flights. To sign up for XM Weather Data Services, contact the Honeywell Global Data Center. This video has been a basic overview of the graphical weather function on the Primus Elite Display System. For a detailed description, refer to the Honeywell Pilot's Guide or Manufacturer's Guidance. In review and of note, enunciators are only displayed if XM weather has been configured and selected. Enunciations are dismissed by positioning the cursor over the error display box and pushing the CCD enter button. XM weather data is broadcast sequentially and it can take up to 20 minutes after the DU is powered to receive all weather products. The enunciator is located in the upper right side of the enhanced map display below the FMS distance to the active waypoint. When activated, the XM weather enunciator flashes reverse video for five seconds and then remains steady. It turns amber when no valid data has been received for 10 minutes, and then it returns white when valid XM data is received again. The XM fail enunciator is displayed if there is an XM antenna failure. The XM not activated is displayed when the XM subscription is expired and has to be renewed with the service provider or if the subscription has not been set up or activated. The no XM enunciator is colored cyan. It is displayed after 10 minutes of no XM signal reception to the DU and is removed when any data is received or user dismissed. And finally, for this section on graphical weather, the timeout monitors give the pilot the ability to maintain awareness of the valid time for the weather product selected. The time that the weather product has been displayed on the display unit is also displayed on the left side of the scale and counts up to the maximum valid time. Times are displayed in the Primus Elite Advanced Features Pilot Guide. The timeout monitor is initially displayed as a green sliding bar scale. The sliding bar scale changes to amber when the weather product has been displayed for half the maximum valid time, except for winds and turbulence where the amber bar is displayed for 130 minutes. When the maximum valid time for the selected weather product is reached, the sliding bar scale is replaced with no data. There are seven conditions listed in the Primus Elite Advanced Features Pilot Guide, which will revert the display screen to a legacy mode from the enhanced mode. When the display unit is reverted to the PFD, when the DU is reverted to ICAS or the system synoptic page, when the checklist is selected for display on the MFD, for the EGPWS pop-up, for EGPWS selection on the MFD display controller, TCAS selection on the MFD display controller, or the MFD mode change on the MFD display controller.
A PFD reversion can take up to three seconds to display the PFD format onto the MFD screen. A manual reversion may be required if a red X is displayed on the primary flight display, the engine, or the CAS display unit as a result of disrupted IAC transmission to the display. When the checklist is opened in an MFD, the MFD inhibits on-site operation of the Primus Elite enhanced features. For example, charts, maps, data, maintenance, and video. However, enhanced features can be displayed on the off-site multifunction display. As noted earlier, Enhanced Ground Proximity Warning System, or EGPWS Annunciators, pop-up alerts will revert the display to a legacy mode. The EGPWS includes a wind shear detection system and terrain display. The EGPWS enunciators are displayed in the upper left portion of the ADI. These enunciators display advisories resulting from the EGPWS alerts and are either amber for caution or red for warning. Alerts will flash for five seconds after activation. The PFD displays the following EGPWS enunciators, wind shear, pull-up, and ground proximity. While TCAS can be displayed on the multi-function display enhanced map, selecting TCAS on the MFD controller automatically displays TCAS in the legacy mode on the MFD. In this section, we will discuss the video display option for Honeywell's Premise Elite Advanced Features. The primary purpose of the video function is to present video on the display unit. There are multiple video inputs to the display unit. When a camera position is selected for display, the video from the selected camera is displayed on the DU. The name of the camera position currently being viewed is displayed below the video. The video function gives the pilot the ability to select the input to display by way of the video source drop-down menu as shown. The video drop-down menu is used for selecting different functions on the MFD. The video drop-down menu contains the following selections. MFD for navigation display on the multifunction display, chart for the chart function on the MFD, map for the enhanced map on the MFD, video shows the video page, and maint shows the DU maintenance page. Exiting the video page is accomplished by selecting another function from the video drop-down menu or by pushing the menu or MFD button on the MC-800. Note that the video button will still be selectable when no video source is connected. In that case, the video function will show a blank screen and display the video unavailable. However, the drop-down menu is still available to access normal enhanced operations. In order to use the video page, Two video configuration files must be created by way of a tool found on the INDS website under My Account Primus Elite Options. More details can be found in Honeywell's Primus Elite Advanced Features Pilot Guide. The last section of this Primus Elite Advanced Features webinar will summarize the enhancements to the maintenance pages. Honeywell's Primus Elite Advanced Features brings several updates and enhancements to the maintenance pages. The maintenance page is displayed by pushing the menu button on the MC800 controller and then selecting Maint on the MFD menu or by selecting Maint from the drop-down menu at the top right of any enhanced page shown here. The main DU maintenance page shows the following. Aircraft type, the display unit part number, the software part number, the display unit position, and the bus select number. From this page, the user will be able to access all other maintenance pages, allowing the user to view the database software and fault log status, load databases for charts, maps, and synthetic vision, load software upon new certification by way of field service bulletin, upload DU fault logs to the USB flash drive and SD, select configuration options, for example, XM, 
and view the status pages for the display unit bus signals such as ERINC 429, ASCB, and discrete inputs. For a description of all of these features in more detail, please consult the Primus Elite Advanced Features Pilot Guide provided for your aircraft platform in the Honeywell Pilot Gateway. Shown here are some resources for more information, pilot guides, and additional familiarization and training material, as well as maintenance and pilot-related documents on Honeywell's products and services. This concludes the pilot familiarization video for Honeywell's Primus Elite Advanced Features. Thank you for your time and interest in Honeywell's leading advanced aviation technology.